Hi, everybody. This is Mr. Folly, and welcome to Podcast 2.1, where we are going to talk about electron configurations. So, um, our topics are going to be long electron configurations, determining the charges of ions given atoms, ion electron configurations, orbital diagrams, counting unpaired electrons, ions of the D block, and valence electrons. That's a lot. So let's see if we can do it in a reasonable amount of time. All right, electrons in the periodic table. Hey, this is the periodic table. Hey, how about that? Electrons are in clouds called subshells that are seen by the blocks in the periodic table. So I'm going to put a block around here. And some people really don't like the fact that I don't give you 65 periodic tables. If you look right here, this is how I draw my very chintzy periodic table. Okay, And notice it's kind of even set up by the block. Okay, um, There's the first one. I really wish I could change my color. This one right here is the S block. It is important to note that helium is also in the S block. Okay, So we're going to identify the S, P, D, and F block. So there's the S's. Okay. I wish I knew how to change my color, but I don't. Now I'm going to do my tin, 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 D block. D block's the middle. Bum, 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 bum. And this is my D block. Okay. And then we have an F block. Bum, 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 bum. What I'm highlighting, you can kind of see the breaks in it. So if I'm outlining it, that also includes it. This is the, uh, oh, sorry, this is the P as in piddle block. P, S, P, D, and then this last one is F. So I'm going to write these so you can see them a little bit better. This is the P as in Paul. This is the D as in dog. I miss my dog. This is the S as in Sam. Okay. So um, tricky part is S kind of sort of helium fits in there. Okay. So that's it. What subshell block is K in? Okay, well, K is right here. K, whoa, that moved me really far. Whee, we're not doing all this today. K is right. Let's not do that again. K is right here. K is in the S block. TC is technetium. See technetium right here? Boom, 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 boom. That's in the D block. All right, so they're just labeled and you're matching them. Iodine is I is right here. Whee! That's the P block. Okay. Electrons are in energy levels that are represented by the period or row on the periodic table. So what that means is I'm going to erase my markings off here. Um, the period or row on the periodic table is just what row it's on. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven. Okay. Electrons are in an energy level, so that would be the energy level that are represented by the period or row in the periodic table. What energy level is strontium and aluminum in? So strontium is right here. That's energy level five. And aluminum is right here. That's energy level one, two, three. Strontium is five. Aluminum is three. And then we've got exceptions. Darn it, it seems so easy. So when you look at the periodic table, it's an ugly beast, isn't it? This is just the best we can do. So there's going to be some exceptions. There's going to be some ugliness that goes on here. So let's let's enjoy our ugly, okay? Um, the D block is actually being in, added inside of the S. So that means if I'm on 4S, so if I'm counting up a 1, 2, 3, 4, so if I've got like, Row level one, level two, level three, level four. So if this is level four, the D block is actually here. Okay? So the D block is being added inside the S. That means the D block will be off by one. So do you see how this D block, oops, I'm sorry. This D block, I think it's the button on my shirt. Come on. Well, now I know not to have all these in one document anymore. The D block is inside the S. So if I'm looking at scandium right here, it says it's the fourth, but this is the third. So this would be 3D is this row right here. 
The one that starts with Y, Y would be 4D, even though it's on the fifth level. Isn't that crazy? So the D is kind of bumped. I don't know. You want to say up one or down one, depending on what it is. But it should be on the fifth level, but it's 4D. Okay? So we be off by one. So it's going to be 5S. 4D. See how that was is not what you'd expect. You'd expect to be 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, but it's 5 and 4. So what energy level are the D electrons in for iron? Fe, Fe, so Fe is right here. I really wish it would stop doing that. Fe is right here, which is the fourth energy level, but adjust it to be three for the D. So iron is 3D. And mercury is right here. So that looks like the sixth, but remember, we've got to adjust it. So it's going to be 5D. F exception. F is kind of weird, okay? So the F block starts with 58, okay? So let's take a little look at this. Here's my F block. I'm going to zoom in. So lanthanum and cerium, these actually go up here, okay? So if we use a good periodic table and not the cheesy one that I clipped from the internet, um, if I use a good periodic table, um, lanthanum goes right here and actinium goes right here. OK, so we're looking at number 58 for this. So what you need to know is that this is the 4F and this is 5F. And that's what you need to know. The F block starts with 58, so it follows 57 from 6S and 5D. And then it will be 4F. The F block is inside the S and it's inside the D. The F block is off its row by 2. So what are the energy... What energy level are the F electrons in europium and berkelium? Europium, 4. Berkelium, 5. And you can put the 4 and 5 on your real periodic table if you want to. Europium was 4. Berkelium was 5. Representations. So the way we look at this is 3s2. This 3 tells us it's the third energy level. This S tells us it's the S block. And this 2 tells us there's two electrons in it. So let's take a look at that. Third row. Hey, hey. S block. Here's the S block, right? I mean, the S block. It's really all of this, but here's the S block. And the second one is magnesium. That's why it's magnesium. 5D5 tells you it's the fifth energy level. Uh-oh, sixth energy level is the row that it's on. And because it's D5, it's the fifth element in the D, which would be technetium. So if I'm the fifth, right? Sixth row, so fifth one. So technetium is one, two, three, four, five. Right? So if it's on the fifth row, I think I did that wrong. I think I did. I think I messed up. If it's 5D5, it's on the 6th energy level. That means I didn't count to 6 properly. 6th energy level. So it is D5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It's uranium. My goodness, I made a boo-boo. I made a boo-boo. I made a boo-boo. And it is uranium. That's for all you people with relatives named Irene that you can call rainy. All right. Electron configurations. We're going to follow der periodic table. Okay, so following the periodic table, starting with H. H is right here. H is right here. First energy level, S block. There's just one. I'm all finished. Yeah, that's pretty good. Now we're going to do F. F has a little more. I'm going to start over here. There's two electrons there, right? First energy level, S block, both electrons. Electron one. Electron two. Second row. 
Second row, S block, I've got one, two. Boom. Now I'm looking for fluorine. Second row still, one, two, three, four, five. Second row, P block, remember this is the P block? Fifth spot, I've got myself fluorine. That's it, okay? All right, now we're going to erase it and do bromine because bromine is long. All right, so here we go. First row, pshh. First row, S block, two. Next part of the block. <sighs> Next part of the block. Second row, S block, two. Second row, P block. I've got, i got to count them up. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six. I remember I'm going to bromine. Bromine's right here. Got a long way to go. Third row, S block, two. Third row, S block, two. Third row, shh, P block, six. I'm cooking now. Fourth row, psh, psh, psh. I'm going to stop at S here. Four, S, two. Now I've got my Ds. Remember, i got to change that. Three, D, and I count them up. If you count them up, trust me, there's ten. Ten. Now I'm back to the P's. Now that I'm back to the P's, that bromine's in, now that I'm back to the P's, I'm kicking back up to that fourth energy level. Four, P, and bromine is one, two, three, four, five. It's the fifth one in that column. Booyah, that's it. That's a long one. So now we're going to find a shortcut. Yeah, shortcut. So noble gas, core notation. Both of them are the same. Noble gas notation and core notation are synonyms. We're going to start with the preceding previous noble gas in brackets. And because we haven't talked about noble gases before, and I don't expect you to remember everything from other school stuff, these are my noble gases. They're this column right here. Okay? So start with your preceding noble gas in brackets. <coughs> Restart with the electron configuration from there. And this shows you the valence electrons, which are the outer S and P. So valence electrons are outer S and P. All right, so let's look at barium. Barium is number 56. I think so. Yep. So the preceding noble gas is xenon. So, oh, why do you do that to me? Why do you do that to me? My preceding noble gas is xenon. So barium is number 56. Xenon is number 54. So then all I have to do is take care of the rest of it. So element number 55 and 56 are cesium and barium. And that is row one, two, three, four, five, six. Barium is xenon, six P dose. Okay. <sighs> Lead. Dun, 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 dun. Lead is here. Boom, boom, boom. Number 82. Still xenon. Xenon. Oh, why do you do that to me? Still xenon. Now, xenon, I got a lot to go through here. 55 and 56 are 6s2. Oh, I put P here. This is an S. Then I've got to do, look right here. Oh, man, you're hurting me today. This guy right here is 57. So that's going to be 5d1. And then I got my Fs. Ba, 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 ba. 4 F. 14. Yeah, there's 14 of them. Take my deep breath so it'll settle on my paper. 4F14. So that gets me through all that. Now I've got to finish this. I'm going to lead, right? So I'm going to add another 9 to lead. So when I do that, my D5D1 is going to turn to 5D10. So I had 5D1 plus 5D9 is going to turn into 5D10. And now, bump, 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 bump. There we go. I'm going to lead, and I've got to do two more. Notice it's again, it's the 6P2. 6P2. Now, that seems like a lot, right? But it's way better than writing all the ones for lead, right? Right. Good. I'm going to skip fermium because I want to get done sooner. Ion determination. The periodic table indicates the charges of atoms when they form ions. Here's your periodic table. Plus one, plus two, 
plus 3, 0, there's 3, minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 0. Um, you do need to know that positive ions lose electrons. So if it's positive 2, that means it loses 2. If it's negative, it gains 3. So plus 1, what that means is everything in this column is plus 1. Everything in this column is plus 3. The other ones we can't really tell about. So. All right. So to find the electron configuration of it, um, you determine the number of electrons. You're going to add or subtract your electrons. And then your ions will be isoelectronic, meaning it have the same electron configuration as a noble gas. So if I have calcium plus two, plus two means I'm going to lose two electrons. Oops. Calcium has 20 electrons. 20 minus two is 18. I'm going to give the exact same electron configuration as argon. Doesn't mean it's argon. It's going to have the same configuration as argon. So then... That means it's going to be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6. So I did that one quick, but that's all right. Nitrogen is negative 3. So nitrogen's right here. And if it's negative 3, that means it's going to gain 3 electrons. 1, 2, 3. It's going to be just like my old pal neon. Okay? So neon is going to be 1s2. 2s2, 2p6. We'll look at the periodic table for just a second with that. Here's neon, right? First row is 1s2. Second part is 2s2, 2p6. Woo! Let me tell you this part, my friends. Um, this is fast. You're not supposed to understand this. You're supposed to have it written down when you come in, and we will practice the practice, practice out of this. Okay? Orbital diagrams. We saw this in class a bit today. An orbital is, a, is shown as a box that holds at most two electrons. Equal energy orbitals like P's, D's, or F's, and we talked about this in class, um, add one electron to every box before any of them gets two. So what you do is you, if you see oxygen and you're given this guy, you look at the periodic table and you see that oxygen has eight electrons. So if it's got eight electrons, you start filling them in. One, two, three, four. Uh-oh. Five, six, seven. Remember how you got to share them? Eight. And there's your right answer. That's all. These you just leave empty. Titanium. I am titanium. So titanium um, has da, 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 22 electrons. 22. I don't know about you, but I'm feeling 22. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two. That's not right. Is that right? That's too many electrons. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen. 19, 20, 21, 22. That's not what I have here. It's supposed to end in D2. Yeah, 22. Oh, I know what's wrong. I gave you a, a cruddy, rotten, stinking uh, orbital configuration here. Oh, that's what I get. The internet is wrong. The internet is wrong. What it's missing is 4S, 1, 2, and then 3D is 1, 2. I'm so sorry. That should have been there for our friend, titanium. Lithium. Lithium has three, right? So that would mean it has one, two, three. Okay. Orbital diagrams help show what it takes to fill an energy level and determine the charge. Oxygen is negative two because it takes two electrons to fill the second energy level. So if you see this right here, see how I would have to add... If I had two more electrons right there, I'm full. I'm at a 2p6. Yeah! Um, so I'm going to have a full S and P, and that's why it forms that ion. Titanium would be plus 2 because you could get rid of these, 4s, right? And then you'd have a then you'd have your S and P, your valence S and P for the third level be full. Or it could be plus 4 because it's going to empty out those, and then you can empty out these two, and you have a full S and P in that case as well. Um, lithium is plus one. See if I got rid of this, I would have a full one S. 
Remember, outer S and P only are your valence electrons. So oxygen has six. So if I look at oxygen, oxygen has six valence electrons, two plus four. I do not include those as valence because they're not on that outer level of two. Valence electrons are the electrons that react in chemistry, so we focus on them a lot in the future, and that's it. So I will say this to you. Good work, my friends, and toodles.